Okay, hi guys. So today we're going to discuss the truly beautiful flower that arose from the blues uh, in an evolutionary sense over time. Most composers, I imagine, uh, used it more instinctively than they did with a conscious understanding of the principles I'm about to show you. Um, this beautiful flower of the blues not only includes blues principles, but it transcends the blues. As Ken Wilber, the spiritual philosopher, would say, it transcends and includes the blues. Okay, uh, this transcendent part of it, uh, you can still use the blues principle of uh, soloing minor against major, for one, and uh, other blues principles as well. Okay, so I'm going to go into more depth with this as this video progresses along. Now, somebody told me that they heard somebody else talking about this. I thought this was my own discovery, but apparently someone said they ran into something similar. That may be the case, but I'll tell you what, you will not get an analysis this in-depth uh, that shows you the exact workings, what's under the hood, how it, it, it's all operating, okay? So in order to start, though, we have to kind of do a review uh, if you really kind of geeked out on my uh, major minor key system and Greek modes, you'll be aware of this. But uh, for those of you that need the reminder, you need to understand the principle we're going to talk about is called the parallel relative switch, the PR switch. OK, now we need to review the principles of what is parallel and what is relative. So let's look at that. I have on my whiteboard, if you look at the top chord uh, set, I have the chords that belong to the key of C. And if I travel up six steps, one, two, three, four, five, six, we get A minor. That is called the relative minor of the key of C major. Now, what is parallel minor? Parallel minor is when you switch qualities. Now, what, are, what do I mean by quality? Quality has to do with, with e whether a chord is major, the major quality, the happy quality, or minor, the minor quality. And sometimes you can include the dominant seventh quality, which in, it, within itself includes major, okay? Um, but so parallel minor from C major would be C minor, okay? Now, uh, these can work in reverse. In other words, if I'm in the key of A minor, C major is the relative major. And if I'm in the key of C minor, C major is the parallel major to C uh, minor, okay? So, um, wow, I'm just realizing this is like a mirror image here. Um, hmm. Oh, well, uh, <laughs> you'll have to stand on your head to understand this. Now, um, C minor, right, as it stands alone, could be the relative minor of some other key. And as it turns out, C minor is the relative minor of the key of E flat major. There you find the C minor at the sixth step. So what we're talking about here is the blending of two keys together. And bear in mind, the whole art of blues is skillfully uh, blending major and minor in certain moments, parallel, in a parallel fashion. In other words, when I have a G minor major chord, I kind of work with the G minor to get the blues sound but I can also flow back into the G major sound. That's the beauty of the blues. And, I, you know, the blues really, uh, you know, I did a video on the, the importance of the blues for my uh, music music videos, and uh, I did 30 minutes of work on this damn thing, and then I go to look at it, and it's got zero bytes in the file. So I don't know what the hell happened, but uh, very frustrating. But I was talking about how... Um, the blues is really a feeling art form, so it would make sense in a way that uh, the blues would defy real super linear logic, and it tends to. We can only look at the clues. Um, you know, most men will attest that women are a mystery, the way they operate just solely by feeling, and we try to understand them, but reason does not understand a woman, okay? Uh, women get very frustrated when guys try to fix emotional problems if you've noticed. Um, in any case, uh, so uh, that's the review of parallel and relative, okay? Relative is the sixth step of a major key, and uh, parallel is the same root chord changing its quality to either major, uh, from major to minor or minor to major. Okay, now here's a really interesting discovery I made. Uh, 
did you know that if you pit two um, major keys together in a certain way, one will act as minor to one of the other major keys. Even though it's a major key, it will have a minor quality compared to, to one of the, the other key you're dealing with. Now, this is all what the parallel relative switch is about. Okay. Now, um, the question is, how did I come about this theory? Uh, you've seen in rock music all sorts of, like, uh, chord movements. <laughs> I got a G, a B flat, a C, and an E flat. It's E flat. Where are these chords coming from? Because they're definitely not in the key of G. G has G, C, and D, but I got a B flat and an E flat in there. <clears throat> I uh, didn't know the principle behind this for a number of years, and I used to put it under the category wandering major chords. I saw one theorist call them um, non-functional majors, which to me... That's a crappy label for it because they do indeed function quite well. Um, so they're not non-functional. They're just functional, functioning in a kind of roundabout way theory-wise, okay? Um, now, here's how it all came about for me. First, I was thinking, well, maybe, you know, if you took all the notes of the minor pentatonic and assigned a major chord to each one, Yeah, that. Um, yeah, it does include some of the chords of the parallel, uh, relative, parallel relative switch, but there's one missing, and we need at least six chords to do this, all right? So I was, I was kind of flummoxed for a while, and then the light shone upon me, the holy divine light of epiphany. And for this to understand this, we have to use, uh, let's start basic minor pentatonic scale. <laughs> I call the primary minor pentatonic. It's not minor, it's also major. It's A minor and C major in the sense of relative keys. If you remember earlier in the key of C major, A was the relative minor. So we have A minor, C major. Now here's the thing about the blues though. We play that A minor pentatonic against an A major chord. ideally an A dominant seventh chord, but no matter, let's just think of it as A major for a while. Um, now, it, what struck me was this. Well, if I'm dealing with A major, but I'm playing what's tantamount, although it's an A minor pentatonic and rooted A in A, it's also tantamount to a C major pentatonic. So I thought to myself, well, what if I took all the chords or just at least the one, four, five of the chords of the key of A, that'd be A, D, and E, and I took the one, four, five of the chords of C, right? Now remember, this chord has the priority. This is a really important part of the uh, parallel relative switch, and I'm, I'll show you how to do it in a moment, but first, just know that when you create this off of a pentatonic scale and you make this first chord major and then do your one, four, five, this has to be the root chord. It can't be the C. And I'll show an example of the reverse parallel switch later on, how they actually uh, made that C chord the, uh, the um, root chord. It doesn't work well. Uh, it doesn't work as well. It has more of an obtuse sound, whereas this, uh, when you retain the A major root in this particular case, uh, it is really pretty what goes on here. So... Um, this is why I call it a flower, because it goes so beyond the blues after a while, and you'll see how. So now, um, yeah, I used to call them wandering major chords, but now I refer to this situation as the parallel relative switch. Now, let's, let's look at this in action. Uh, I'm going to transpose, I think it's an F, I'm going to transpose this key of E uh, to make it uh, more viable. Uh, the song uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit, which is E... see you can tell they all work quite well together and if I were to uh, and notice that E is the root chord it ends there 
Now, if I were to jam on that, I would treat this E chord as if I was playing the blues. What does that mean? I play E minor pentatonic. Let me, let me lay down the loop for this. Okay, now I'm going to play an E minor pentatonic off that E major, right? So you get the sense that this um, is working, right? It, all the notes seem to fit. So now let's look at the breakdown. How does this work? Remember, the order is parallel relative. So if I take my E chord and I shift parallel, which means change the quality to E minor, E minor is the sixth step of some key. G, A, B, C, D, E. It's the sixth step of the key of G. So now what I do is I take the one, four, five of E and the one, four, five of G. And I have the one and four of E for, for this particular song, one and four. And one and four of G. Now, uh, to go to the older music, which I'm much more familiar, uh, familiar with, being a dinosaur and all like that, would be the song um, uh, See Me, Feel Me by The Who, which is a really nice progression. And it uh, goes like this. Listen to that B. If you hear it saying it because it wants to resolve to E. Okay. So when we look at the progression, then we have A major, B major, C major. C is out of the key of E. A major, B major, E major. So four, five, one of E. Then back to A major, B major, C major. Then I get G, D, and B. All right. So remember, our root chord was E. So I got four, five, one. Right. Now, if I do the parallel relative switch, E major, I go parallel, E minor, and E minor is the sixth step of what key? We just did it, G major, okay? So if I take the one, four, five of G major, I have G, C, D, all right? So now if we analyze that progression, we look at four, five of E, then up to the four of G, which is a C major chord, is the fourth chord of G. Now listen when it goes, this next time it goes to D, and notice how it relaxes the whole thing. That C sets up a lot of tension, okay? Then it goes back to A, B, C, so four, five of E. C is four of the key of G. G is one, G is five, and then B is five of the key of E. And the uh, progression rolls on like that. And again, if I wanted to use the blues principle on this, um, now our root chord is E, so I play E minor pentatonic. does not sound like blues at all. But why does it work with the blues principle? Again, it's minor under major. In this case, uh, 
G major and E major. Now the minor key, if, even though it's not technically a minor key, it's G, the key of G major, it acts as minor to the key of E major under the umbrella of E major. So G major becomes minor in relationship to the key of E. This is a serious discovery. This is really important and cool. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, <laughs> no chance of this going viral, but you know, I, I'm hoping a lot of people that are into theory can see this. I'd love for Rick Beato to see it. Uh, I think he'd get a kick out of uh, uh, this bit of information here. Okay, so uh, yeah. Now, uh, you can, this can get really sublime, this stuff. Um, and this is why I suggest to all you guys who are uh, um, composers and want to write music, especially, uh, you should really inspect uh, the music of the mid 60s. Uh, uh, Mamas and the Papas, Jim Webb, of course, the Beatles. Um, a lot of the Motown stuff. I don't know if they employ much of this. Well, no, they have employed the parallel relative switch in a lot of their music and from Motown. Motown was equivalent to the Beatles. It, they were fucking amazing writers and musicians as well. That's one place where they had the Beatles beat is that they were better musicians, much more well-trained than the Beatles were. Um, yeah, in fact, I, I just did a recent re-exploration of McCartney's amazing solo record, Ram, which is just a genius beyond genius. It is a fucking masterpiece. And the only thing I don't like about it is his guitar playing. I think his playing is a little wimpy. I have the same complaint about him that I have about Carlos Santana. Their bends are weak. The, the bend has to be really strong and spot on. And Paul's bends are kind of weak. And he sounds a little like an amateur lead guitarist, uh, as, as great as he is. And that does not at all uh, take away from the absolute brilliance of the Ram record. I equate that as totally equal to Mozart and all the great classical composers. And I mean that wholeheartedly. That is a work of amazement. Uh, so do check out, do yourself a favor, and get a set of headphones on so you can really hear the stereo effects and what's going on and all the parts and just unbelievable. Um, and strangely enough, you know, some of its, the chord progressions themselves are actually pretty simple. I, I thought uh, Uncle Albert, uh, uh, um, Admiral Halsey was like this really complicated arrangement of chords, but it's not. It's very simple. It's A minor to D, A minor to D, G minor to C, G minor to C. All right. So now, but uh, the reason I brought up the 60s music is I want to look at the song Monday, Monday by the Mamas and the Papas. I have to boot it up here. All right. So this song is in a hairy key. F sharp is kind of a sucky key. So it's hard to, uh, it's not a lot of fun. Um, breaking it down because of all the sharps, but uh, we have this, um, F sharp major to S sharp major, sus suspended form. So that's Mixolydian, that's F sharp to E, uh, F sharp Mixolydian, you could say. And then they go up to A major, right? And they add a little fluff to it. To C sharp major. This is an amazing, amazing piece of work. Um, John Phillips, I think, was the writer, didn't have a lot of output, but his greatest works were totally equal to Beatles greatness. Check out a song called, uh, I saw her again. The chord changes are amazing. And that has some parallel relative stuff in it. Um, any case. Um, so if we technically do the parallel relative switch, then we have F sharp major. We do the quality change first to F sharp minor. And we discover that F sharp minor is the sixth chord of the key of A major. So we're dealing with, this is our king, this is our overriding umbrella, this is our major, major key, and A major will be our minor major key. So now the one, four, fives are F sharp, B, and C sharp, and F sharp, and then an A is A, D, and E. So let's look at what's going on here. Um, 
we have our root chord F sharp to B major, which is the five chord of the key of A now. And we go to our root chord of A. Now listen to the C sharp, the five chord five chord of the key of F sharp. It's really explodes when it comes in. Here we go again. It takes us right back to F sharp. up a half step. This is incredible. I won't go into the analysis of that section. Uh, the half step modulation also starts using the parallel relative switch in an interesting way. Uh, so just so you know. Uh, now let's look at uh, this. Is when I'm, I'm slowly, slowly advancing um, the usage of this to more and more sophisticated situations. The mamas and the papa situation is a good example of that. Um, now we have lovely Rita by the Beatles, a ton of major chords. And as uh, what, what McCartney does here is so cool. We hear B and we think of it as root chords. So it's uh, You can hear it sit as a root. But now this is B mixolydian. Okay. Now. B mixolydian comes from the key of E, so now he's going to change the root to E. And there's no key change in here whatsoever. It's just changing the feeling of the root. So We have an E root. So now let's do our parallel relative switch. You start with the quality change from major to minor. Remember, this will be our overriding key. And E minor is a sixth step. We've done this already, is the sixth step of the key of G. So the one, four, five, E, A, D, and G, C, D. You can even hear the relative parallel switch when I simply do the one, four, five. And again, because the G key of G is minor to the key of E, and remember, minor is sad, when we come back to the E major, it, it blossoms. It, it, it uh, really kind of, it's a relief. All right, once once more, just that one four five situation. And of course, the parallel relative switch has been used like for this thing. As with Billy Shears off of Peppers, song by Johnny Winter called Rock and Roll Hoochie Coo. Again, par parallel relative switch. You must go back to the 60s to find the great, great songwriting. And also the 70s, too, which was a kind of a refinement of what they discovered in the 60s. Um, okay, so that's Lovely Rita. Did, did I finish Lovely Rita? No, we didn't even get on that. Okay, so... Um, so this, that D is the five chord. We remember we're, we're moving between E and G major keys. So D is the five chord of G, A is the uh, four chord of E, and E is the root. So. so that's the five chord of the key of E. We get to the sixth chord of e, e, which is uh, C sharp minor. Now this F sharp seven, totally different world. This is from the major minor key system. This is secondary dominant going to be. Five of G and 
G is one of G. So notice we also have the movement. This happens a lot with the parallel relative switch. Um, uh, the movement in fourths, which is E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Uh, this can be witnessed in, uh, which also has the parallel rel relative switch, uh, Mrs. Robinson by uh, Paul Simon. song from the 60s so the parallel relative switch is definitely intimately connected to movement and force and in fact it takes three steps in force to get to the switch my key is e i change it to e minor that's the relative minor of the key of g i'm working between e and g if i go here's a step one to a e f g a a b a b c d d e f g so it takes three movements in fourths to get to the switch to key, all right? This is why you'll see a lot of this. Um, uh, maybe I'm amazed is, is, amazed is a great word. This chord progression is outrageous. Um, now, uh, let's look at maybe I'm amazed for a second. Uh, the intro is in D. Goes to D minor. I'm going to play D minor 7. I think that was the intention. Then E minor 7 and A. That's the intro. So he goes D, D minor, D minor 7, A7. All right, well, when I do, that's, that's the switch right there. You go parallel, D minor. That gives us the key of F. All right. And then... He hints at that just for that one little moment of the D minor, because the E minor and A are from, from D. But then he goes to the B flat, the four chord of the key of F. But watch what he does now. He makes C the root. Now we do a whole other set of parallel relative switches that, that go off from C. It's remarkable, a remarkable chord progression. All right, um, another one from the early days of the Beatles, or pretty early, is uh, Think For Yourself. It has the fuzz bass in it. That's actually what's going to happen as a tritone substitution. I don't want to get into that territory. I discussed that earlier. But um, so um, um, you can hear G is the root chord. So we're going to do the switch from G. We go G to G minor. G minor is the sixth step of the key of B flat major. All right. So we go G, the one chord, A minor. Then we have the B flat chord, the one of uh, from, from the key of B flat to the key of C uh, to G, the four chord of G, and then finally the G chord. Just that B flat makes stick pops his little head in and says, "Okay, parallel relative switch for this little moment." But notice the thing when when you go to the bridge, he goes into blues changes then, which would be four dominant seven C seven. Remember, 
all this parallel relative switch emerges from the major minor relationship of the blues and the blending of those two. And notice how easily it flows into blues when he does the, the straight blues changes. Uh, so that's a great example. I myself wrote a progression E to B minor seven to C to A minor to D. Now, now what's going on is before we were talking about the major chords and, and, um, uh, how they travel around using this parallel relative switch. But the real flower of all this is when you include minors, you get such a beautiful effect. So here's the thing. I used E as my reference key to create the, the switch. All the other chords following are only from the key of G. So when we get back to E, it's this incredible release because our ear has heard that E chord is like, when's it coming? When's it coming? All right. So uh, the progression is this E to B minor 7 to C major, A minor 7 to D. And I'm going to loop it. And again, the blues principle, E is my root chord. So E minor uh, pentatonic. Okay, so, uh, yeah, um, I'll just real quick. Now, um, if you take the song Dock of the Bay, what it does is it takes the what should have been the root chord, uh, E, and it reverses the role. So the, 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 the key that's minor in relation to the major key E is G. You never use the minor, the one that's related as a minor major key, if this is getting confusing. Uh, it's always the lower, uh, the, the, like in a pentatonic scale, here's E, here's G. This E major would be the, the primary umbrella under which all the other chords will flow. So when you look at Dock of the Bay, what they did, instead of doing G major, he did uh, E major, he did G major as the root chord. And then you get this really kind of obtuse set of chords. I never like this progression. It's a great song. And it definitely evocative of, you know, it really captures the feeling. But I don't like the chord changes very much. It goes like this. I'll go right to the chorus. just isn't strong. And I don't like the movement from G to A back to G or G to E back to E. It just doesn't, doesn't work for me. So let's look at this. So um, we have to do this in reverse now. What is the relative minor of the key of G is E minor. And then we turn that to E major. All right. So now if we look at the chords, G is the one of the key of G. B is the five of the key of E. C is the four of the key of G. A is the four of the key of G. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm kind of going fast with this because, uh, like I said, I'm not happy with the chord, that particular chord progression. And again, you can't use the minor under major blues principle in your soloing. In this case, you have to be aware of each chord and how you're going to use it. All right. It doesn't have that simplicity of just choosing one global scale throughout. OK, so bear that in mind, too. All right, so uh, that'll be it for today. Uh, this wraps up the whole blues series, unless there's some big pertinent questions that people come up with that I'll need to make a video for. But I think I've covered all the bases, and if I ever discover the secret key to all this stuff, 
I will definitely post a video about it because that's been my search. What is the real theory of the blues? All I know is that it blends major and minor keys and it has certain earmarks like the four dominant seven to one dominant seven and so on and so forth. Okay, guys, I hope you learned something from this video. Have a great day and have a Merry Christmas if uh, you're of the Christian faith and I uh, hope you had a happy Hanukkah if you're of the Jewish faith and uh, all the other faiths, you know, hope you had a great time. It's a it's a season for us all. So enjoy. Bye.